Hello and good day everyone. I'm Shadia Ayati and this video was provided by Saman Hosseini from the Hyperlysian team. In this video, I'm going to go through modeling functionally graded material or FGM in Abacus using the USD FLD subroutine. In this video, which is the first of two, I will mesh the cylinder structure using solid elements. And in the second video of this tutorial, I will model the cylinder structure by shell elements. First and foremost, I will describe the USD FLD subroutine and the parameters used in this process. After that, I'm going to explain FGM's material properties. Then I will provide you with an example of the FGM's material by using the USD FLD subroutine in Abacus. And lastly, I will analyze the results generated by the modeling. As you know, the USD FLD subroutine is very well known. Since the USD FLD subroutine is easier than the UMAT subroutine, engineers often prefer to use the former over the latter. For instance, to develop the hardening behavior of the material based on the von Mises criteria, in the UMAT subroutine, you will need more than 500 lines of code. However, you can yield the same result with less than 20 lines of code using the USD FLD subroutine. Then again, keep in mind that the UMAT subroutine could be more precise than the USD FLD subroutine. In the USD FLD subroutine, you are able to customize the mechanical and thermal material behaviors using the variables already filed and available in Abacus. For example, when a beam of laser passes through the powder, turning it into molten liquid, as a result, we will have two different phases of matter simultaneously in our simulation. We can simulate the two phases with the USD FLD subroutine. Another function of the USD FLD subroutine is to help us develop customized damage criteria for composites and hyperelastic materials and or define a damage criterion that isn't already defined in Abacus. In case you needed to utilize the Abacus Explicit Solver in your simulation, you can use the VUS DFLD subroutine. And if you needed to utilize the Abacus Standard Solver in your simulation, you can use the USD FLD subroutine. These two subroutines are very similar in terms of developing. This subroutine can be applied to many academic and industrial projects. This subroutine can be used in various thermomechanical analysis, in modeling airplane wings and greatly in biomechanical projects, to name a few. Let me provide you with an example of using the USD FLD subroutine in biomechanics. Imagine a broken bone that is undergoing the healing process. We can define the mechanical properties of the bone, such as its Young module or density, as a function of time. Here you can see the parameters of the USD FLD subroutine needed for modeling FGMs. Field is a variable that we use to define our material, and N field is the number of fields we use for the field. We develop our material equation using field variable. Please note, Abacus begins to calculate the element stresses and stiffness, and it interpolates the nodal values of using the integration material point of the elements. So, old field variable is defined at integration points. Also, because we use tabular data in Abacus software, needs to do interpolation between the cells to calculate the field, which is mass diversity in our example. Since the field variables are memoryless and become zero in each increment, we have to use the state variables to save them. The difference between field variables and state variables is that state variables are not memoryless. The solution-dependent state variables, updated in the USD FLD subroutine, are then passed into other user subroutines that can be called at this material point, such as creep, uhard, umat, and so on. N state v is the number of state variables that are defined in a model. In case the value of a state variable does not get updated in an increment, as a default, the value will be initialized from the previous increment. 
Our next parameter is CM name, which is the material name specified by the user. This parameter is useful when we have multiple materials in our code. The next parameter, n field, as mentioned, is the number of field variables that are defined in Abacus. And the next parameter, KSTP, which is the step number. The last parameter, COORD, is a variable containing the location of material point in a coordinate system. We can use multiple steps to proceed with an analysis. Similarly, as we can break each analysis into multiple steps, we can break each step into multiple increments. Time 1 is the time from the beginning of the step until the current increment step time. Time 2 is the time from the beginning of the analysis until the current increment step time. We can also call time 2 the total time. K step is the number of each step and K inc is the number of each increment. Suppose that step 1 and step 2 both take 10 seconds. In that case, time 1 for that material point would be 5 seconds while time 2 would be 15 seconds. The structure and layers of a composite are shown in the picture on the left. Each composite layer has its own specific mechanical properties. The picture in the center shows the structure of an FGM. The properties of the FGM are modified slowly and gradually. This gradual modification of the FGM's mechanical properties brings many advantages into the equation. One of these advantages is FGM's high resistance to delamination. Since the mechanical properties of each layer in FGM, unlike the properties of composite layers, change gradually instead of abruptly and drastically, the resistance to delamination increases. To name other advantages of using FGM, we could mention reduced stress concentration, mechanical resistance to high loads, resistance to high temperature gradients, and high crack growth resistance. When we have corrosive chemicals to be stored in a chemical storage tank, the material of the inner layer of the tank plays an important role and has to be an anti-corrosive to avoid erosion or corrosion. However, the material of the outer layer of the tank is important too, since it has to be resistant and reinforced. In such cases, a perfect solution would be to use FGM in making the tanks. Here you can see the cross-section of a cylinder defined by solid elements and the Young modulus or MPA as a function of radius. In this example, the inner radius amounts to 55 mm and the outer radius to 65 mm. Here you can see the equation for the Young modulus, which is a function of radius E0 amounts to 70,000 megapascals. Since cylinders are symmetrical structures, I have modeled a quarter of the cylinder with a length of 120 mm. Seven solid elements have been incorporated in the thickness of the cylinder. Very well. Now here we can see the setting for Abacus's material module that helps us create the FGM. To call the USD FLD subroutine in Abacus, we have to click on the user defined field option. In the depth var section, we can define the number of solution dependent state variables, which is set to 3 in our example. The value should be anything other than 0. The function of solution dependent state variables is that the USD FLD subroutine, the variables, would be saved as SDVs. These tables are used to define materials in Abacus. As you can see, the radius of the cylinder is defined as input in field 1 and Young's module, based on the field variable, is calculated. When Abacus reaches field variables, it puts the corresponding values in Young's module. Alright, here you can see the defined properties in Abacus for FGM, which is the blue diagram and the field variable output defined through the thickness, which is the orange diagram. With the help of the codes written for this simulation, that we will learn about it in just a few minutes, we can clearly see that the radius of the cylinder is saved as SDV1. You can see its contour on the left. 
The young Marullus is also saved in the first field variable, as can be seen in the picture. Before we move on to Atticus simulation, let me just tell you that it would be much appreciated if you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel, if you haven't already. Okay, first and foremost, to model a cylinder, we must choose the 3D modeling space and the solid shape. First, I assign a reference point, and then, as you can see, I form a quarter of the cylinder that is supposedly my storage tank. The inner radius should be 55 and the outer radius 65 millimeters. When I'm done sketching, I click on the Done option down the screen. After the Edit Base Extrusion tab opens, I set the cylinder's depth as 120. After setting the module as property, I will be able to open the Edit Material tab. I then click on User Defined Field to call the USD FLD subroutine in Abacus. After that, I click on Depth Bar to set the number of SDVs, which is 3 in our example. Moving on to Mechanical Behaviors, I click on Elasticity and then Elastic. For this simulation, it is suitable to create one field variable. Now I will switch to Microsoft Excel for a moment to work out the aforementioned equations and obtain the mechanical behaviors of the FGM. After opening a basic worksheet, I need to enter the radius in millimeters, starting from 55 to 65. Then I need to enter Young's modulus in megapascals. Then we proceed just as we mentioned before. First, we enter E0 plus radius squared, multiplied by 60, and then we apply the same equation to every remaining row. Alright, now we have entered the Young modulus as a function of radius. However, since I'm planning to copy this timetable into Abacus, I can simply enter Poisson's ratio here too. Now we have the mechanical behaviors of the FGM, so we can just copy them into the data section. Now, we want to create a solid section for our material so that our defined material is applied to our sketch. Our point of reference and the coordinate system is important for us because we applied a function of radius, and the radius is located on the coordinate system. We must pay attention to the coordinate system while coding. Alright, in the step module, we create a step and then choose static general as the procedure type. For the state variables and the field variables to be shown in the output, we need to manually select them in the Edit Field Output Request tab. In the Load module, we create the mechanical boundary condition of symmetry, antisymmetry, encaster, and apply it to the cross section above and below our sketch, and then create the mechanical boundary condition of displacement or rotation to the side nearer to our point of reference. The kind of boundary condition that we choose depends on the symmetricity of our simulation. Now I want to enter the pressure that is supposed to be put on the storage tank. I set the magnitude of pressure put on the inner layer of the cylinder as 0.7 megapascals. I proceed to mesh the simulation. As we also mentioned during going through the slides, we should choose 7 elements from the thickness of the cylinder. We use fully integrated elements in our simulation. In the job module, we need to create a new job. However, before we move on to that, let me take a little detour and explain how our coding works. Here, our first coordination is defined as X and our second coordination is defined as Y so that we don't need to enter the coordinates multiple times throughout the coding process. In this part, we calculate the radius using the coordinate system. Here, we define the Young's modulus based on field variables, and then put the radius under state v, which, unlike field variables, are not memoryless. After submitting our desired job input for analysis, we can see the output in the visualization module. We saved the radius in DSV1 and as you can see in SDV1's contour. 
a radius starts from 54.8 millimeters, which is the closest to 55 millimeters, our inner radius, and ends at 64.8 millimeters, which is similarly the closest to 65 millimeters, our outer radius. Here you can see the contour of the field variables, which includes the Young modulus. Young's modulus differs based on the length of our simulation. To compare the outputs which is checked with Abacus input in Excel, I need to create a path through the cylinder's thickness. I will name the resulting graph as field solid and repeat the same process for the state variables, naming it SDV solid. After clicking on SDV solid and choosing edit XY data, all left to do is simply copy the desired coordinates and paste them into Excel. I will easily repeat the same process for field solid. Then I will form a graph from my outputs and try to modify it. Here I'm going fast forward to just prepare and plot. Very well. The orange graph represents Abacus input material, while the blue graph represents Abacus output state and field variables. In part 2 of this tutorial, instead of solid elements, I'm going to use shell elements. We can perform the very same simulation using shell elements. However, using shell elements requires some changes in the coding of the USDFLD subroutine, and also Abacus setting. You can, depending on your requirement and problem, choose any of these approaches. They both have their advantages and disadvantages, and it's just a matter of choice. Thank you for watching this video. Best of luck to you! Website hyperlyceum.com. Salman is an expert in Abacus, 3Matics, Mimix, SolidWorks, Ketia, and a few other engineering software. To plan online sessions and discuss industrial and academic projects, please use the provided email under Salman's contacts. The cost of the projects vary depending on the complexity of the work and can be discussed in advance. We look forward to working with you.